I want to talk about a chasm that divided Scotland for centuries and to some extent continues to do so to this day. We'll visit some significant locations from beautiful Highland Perthshire all the way down to Dumfries and Galloway. And maybe we'll find that the two sides had more similarities than you might think. If you're interested in the people, places and events in Scottish history, then click the subscribe button at the bottom right of the screen and ring the notification bell to be sure to be notified when I launch new videos. In the meantime, let me tell you a story. Are you a Jacobite or a Covenanter? Whose side are you on? Have you ever given thought to the connection between the two even? Tell me in the comments section. Tell me, have you heard about them? And more importantly, if you have, which of the two gets your sympathy? Both groups thought that they were preserving what was divinely ordained. Both had been the power wield and established order of things before falling foul of persecution. Both experienced that persecution in horrific brutality, punishment and summary executions. In both cases, their fall was the result of a monarch coming from the Netherlands to take the throne in London. In Scotland at least, both pitted largely Presbyterians against Episcopalians. Both movements lasted for generations with bitterness passed from father to son. Both had a defining battle that was followed by brutal treatment of prisoners, executions and transportation to the Americas. And there was one character more than any other who connected them both, Bonnie Dundee. Now the song Bonnie Dundee focused on his actions when the Lords of the Convention in Edinburgh met to decide what to do in response to William of Orange's arrival from the Netherlands. So began the Jacobites. When James VII was ousted from the English throne by William of Orange arriving from Holland, lots of people remained dutifully loyal to the Stuart line and the rightful king. But William's regime imposed itself throughout the British Isles. In Scotland, there was an uprising of Highlanders led by John Graham of Claverhouse, Bonnie Dundee who died heroically at the Battle of Killacranky, supposedly on the spot marked by the Claverhouse Cairn here. I actually made a video about that and there will be a link later. There followed generations of suppression and persecution in the Highlands, including the Glencoe Massacre. Underground survival, hiding in remote places, and then the raising of Bonnie Prince Charlie's standard at Glenfinnan and the horrors of post culloden control and then clearance. I know, I know, you've heard it all already. You feel sympathy with the Highlanders. You've visited the sites, you've sung the songs. You might have seen Outlander. And that's kind of my point. What about the Covenanters? I've made a video that will give you the background to how the National Covenant came about. Click the link top right to see that. I've also made a video explaining one of the most famous and horrific martyrdoms. Also, today I wanted to give you a broad sweep of the times whilst taking you to the key Covenanter and Jacobite locations. The southwest of Scotland were the Covenanter heartlands. Since Charles I's demise, Covenanters had been at a high. They'd controlled the church and the church was established in law. And then Charles II was restored to the English throne in 1660. Almost in parallel to what would happen to the Jacobites 30 years later, the Covenanters fell from power when somebody came from the Netherlands to be crowned King of England. Two laws were passed to overturn all that the Covenanters had gained in the previous 20 years, and to require everyone to deny the National Covenant. The government now controlled the church and bishops were the order of the day. Covenanters had to hold their religious meetings hidden in the open air. Now, I get the oxymoron. That the persecution 
had started. You'll find memorials all over the country to people martyred in the following 30 years. Most are in the south and the west. This one in Dumfries is just one of them. Just as the Jacobites would from time to time, Covenanters rose in violent rebellion. Where the Jacobites had Killacranke, Sheriff Muir and Culloden, Covenanters had Drumclog, Bothwell Brig and Ruin Green. The suppression got heavier still. This is Crickup Lynn. It's just one of the places that Covenanters were known to hide out as persecution reigned from the throne above. 1679 was a year of uprisings and violence. It would lead to an even more severe crackdown. By this stage, you could be fined for not attending the official church services run by the curates of the king. It was against the law to gather for Presbyterian services in homes or outdoor. And to ensure compliance and to enforce royal will, a Highland host was sent to the Covenant in Lowlands. If that reversal of roles isn't obvious, then let me put it more plainly. A Highland army came south to enforce the king's will on lowland Presbyterians. They were built locally to suppress and police the people. Covenanters would hide out in the hills to avoid capture. Every nook, every cranny and distant hideaway would be used as a refuge. It's incredible to think that a place of such beauty could be a place of fear. A bit like the Highlands would be sometime later. But things were about to get worse. We're so familiar with the story of Bonnie Prince Charlie raising a standard where the Glenfinnan Monument stands today. Where despite relatively small support, he went forward with unshakable belief in his cause and faithful followers who were prepared to die to see it achieved. This place is a bit like that. Oh, I know the monument's not quite as grand and looking down Sankar High Street isn't quite the same as the views down Loch Shiel and it's far less peaceful. But here, on the 22nd of June 1680, a small group of men led by two Cameron brothers gathered to hear the reading of what's become known as the Sankar Declaration that disowned Charles II and denounced him as king. This meant trouble. Fortunately, you wouldn't get arrested for shouting, not my king, these days, would you? They'd just declared war on the king. Ironically, it would be the Cameronian regiment that they inspired that would defeat Bonnie Dundee's forces at Dunkeld to end the first Jacobite uprising that supported that royal family. But we're not there yet. Behind me is a black bull and muffet. The Reverend Richard Cameron, the minister who stood with his brother at Sankar, didn't survive long after that declaration. What's more, it was a spur to even greater heights of persecution. Now we don't have time to summarise all the atrocities, but for a while, John Graham of Claverhouse based himself in this inn. Back in the early 1680s, it was the headquarters of a brutal repression the place from which Claverhouse masterminded the hunting down of Covenanters and terrorised the South West with summary executions. So many of the graves and memorials to Covenant and Martyrs peppered around the countryside of Lanarkshire, Ayrshire, Dumfries and Galloway and more are markers to what Claverhouse engineered. Not Bonnie Dundee in this neck of the woods, but bloody Clavers. If the resemblance to the Duke of Cumberland after Culloden seems as apt as it is ironic, then let me take you back to Highland Perthshire for one even greater irony. On the way north, 
will pass Glasgow. And I'll be back there at the fantastic Stand Comedy Club on the 21st of September to do my live show, Stories of Scotland. Glasgow punters can click the link top right to get your tickets. But I'll also be out in Giffnick at Eastwood Park Theatre on the 6th of October. So, for all details of all the tour dates and tickets, there's a link in the description below. We're back in beautiful Highland, Perthshire. It's the focus of the first Jacobite uprising. William of Orange arrived in 1688. The regime of Charles II, followed by his brother James VII, had been overthrown. John Graham of Claverhouse raised the Highland army and barred the Killiecrankie Pass here as redcoats tried to come up the route to take Blair Castle. Now, despite victory, Claverhouse was killed on these slopes. When his Highland troops attacked Dunkeld, they were held off by none other than the Cameronian Regiment, whose genesis was that declaration read at Sanka. Claverhouse was taken to Blair Castle and is buried in the grounds. Inside that same castle, there's an original copy of the National Covenant. Can't you just feel the weight of irony pressing down on you? With the Presbyterian Church re-established and freedom to practice religion, unless you were Catholic, there was no more need for Covenanters. But a copy of the Covenant and the fiercest persecutor of those who followed it, both rest at Blair Castle where the first events of the Jacobite uprisings took place. The era of the Covenanters was over. The Jacobite period had begun here in North Persia. If you'd like to see a video about Claver House from the other point of view, then click the video coming up on screen. I can only make these videos with your support. The easiest way to show that support is to give me a thumbs up, but if you can help support financially, then please do so by clicking top right to become a Patreon member or buy a coffee in the description below. In the meantime, I'm going to be a lot of my life. Cheerio and drasta.